Hey, right now on the flip side, we're actually going to have our 50th episode, and we're going to deal with one of the most serious topics we've ever dealt with on the flip side. We're going to talk about slavery. We're going to talk about slavery then and slavery now and what it means to real, authentic believers in Christ. You can't miss this special episode of The Flip Side right now. Hello and welcome to not just the flip side, my friend, the 50th episode oh, of the happy flip side. Birthday oh, happy birthday, to birthday us. flip side. 50 episodes. Wow, that's then, impressive. And it seems like we've been doing this for three weeks to me, <laughs> yeah. but uh, 50 great episodes and Incredible. literally, literally thousands and thousands of yeah. follows and likes and shares. So thank you. Give it up yeah. for them. Come on, friends. Well yeah. done. Yeah. We are well on our way to our goal here of really just living out and learning and just mastering the Word of God in our day-to-day life, not just on the weekends. Yep. And boy, do we have a great passage for that. But before we get to this challenging and awesome passage, <laughs> let's get some coffee in us for this 50th Please. episode. Uh, Haley, what are we talking? Oh. Let me guess. It's African. Yes. Oh, oh. very good. <laughs> but yep. where? So let's talk about the prophetic here. Uh, I'm going to say oh, Uganda. Okay. No. But how many continents would you... Africa's got a lot of... It's South America, South America, that's where we're at. Well, that's where you go back and forth every other week. Kurt trying to act What are the notes? What are the notes? The notes are pear, lemon, and punchy. It's a single origin from Ethiopia from Verve Coffee. Mm. So punchy. Punchy like fruity or punchy like... um, I've been in a fight with Conor McGregor. Well, you tell me. What do you think? Last week we had some street level blend tart. from Burr for, yeah. it's tart. for the it's tart. It's town bright. It's, sure. it's bright. Yeah. We brought your favorite. It's cleansing. Yeah. It's cleansing. Yeah. Mm. It is like light. It? It's light. Yes. It's good. Mm. It's I can, I can feel mm. I, taste you know, 50 flavors in there. I like yeah. the chocolatey, <laughs> but this is very fruity. And, this is good. Yeah. Good. So enjoy. All right, all right, all right. Well done. Here we go. All right, so we're. Oh my oh, word! Oh my <laughs> word! Well, there's it's all hot. One hundred percent. Well done. Don't get caught sleeping. <laughs> home. Okay. This is the fiftieth episode, Good. people. Uh, all you people that just crashed your cars, you swerve. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Do not that send us an, <laughs> any emails. <laughs> Hannah. Yeah. Hannah. <laughs> Andrew and I want to have lunch with you at Shetty's after this. Yeah. <laughs> and there's confetti yeah. in my coffee now. Okay, okay. Let's get the people are tuning in okay, to learn the Bible. Let's get to the Bible here. We're halfway through our series of Colossians, and before we get into this passage, was I want to I want to take a fifty thousand yeah. foot look at just the themes because it's four little chapters. And yet, it's four chapters, Paul's writing to a group he's never met, and yet the more I study this book, the more I'm just so impressed with how dense and powerful the theological themes yeah. of Colossians are. He's, um, he's got, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw some words out of you guys, yeah, yeah. I, want, I want to get your theological response for this. So the first one is the word mystery. Paul compares mm-hmm. and contrasts two mysteries. What's your thought on the theme of mystery in the book of Colossians? I think that what Paul is trying to do is that he's also trying to counter the Gnostics who are all about the mysterious. They're all about, yeah, we're in the VIP thought lounge and you need to get the mystery to get in with us. And he's going, no, there was a mystery, but it's been revealed in Christ. And it's the whole thing. As Bishop Lightfoot says, there is no other document that Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that better addresses the person of Christ than the book of Colossians. I, I, what I love about what you just said, Andrew, mm-hmm. is that you have to read this and see the the sarcasticness of Paul. Almost. Yeah. He's going, they think they got a mystery. They don't got no mystery. No. No. Your little secret knowledge about angel rituals out in the forest with a pixie yeah. dance, <laughs> um, that, is they, that's no mystery. They thought they were stranger things. Yes, yeah. exactly. No. The mystery is God fully come to earth. Yeah. And it's not a mystery for the elite Yes, it's all. a mystery that God loves me this much. It's such a powerful contrast, and I think we miss it. We, yeah. we, we just skip over that idea of mystery, but he's saying, no, 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 no. I'm going to take your mystery concept, and I'm going to theologically beat you over the head with it, oh, you yeah. false teacher. Yeah. Yeah. It's powerful. All right, Carl, I got one for you. Okay, make it easy. Uh, okay. Make it uh, easy. Uh, he talks about this idea of circumcisions and baptisms. Circumcisions 
and baptisms. Why does Paul keep coming back to these, one of them a very awkward topic? One of them was a very awkward topic, and it would have made easily easy sense for the Jewish listener understanding what circumcision was talking about. But Paul's really going towards the heart. Yes. Is like this is what God's trying to get after. These rituals that you guys have been doing over and over and over, uh, as painful as they may be, yeah. God wants to do a much deeper work within you mm-hmm. and and really get to the get to the heart of the get to the heart of the issue. Literally get to the heart of the yeah. issue. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the uh, he takes the most external thing Correct. you can yeah. do and says God wants to do that to you. That's a shadow of what He wants to yeah. do. Yeah. On the internal, I said this on the Granite Bay uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, was one of the main lessons that I learned walking around Israel is there's mikvahs everywhere. There's mm-hmm. these ceremonial baths everywhere, and yeah. uh, and this is a Christian. You go, we invented baptisms. No, we didn't. There was massive amount of over and over again ceremonial washing, yeah. and then like you, Paul, Paul says, no, 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 no. All mm-hmm. of that's a shadow to get to the internal washing mm-hmm. and the internal cutting yep. yeah. that I want to do. Okay, then here's my favorite theme of, of Colossians, and that is the theme of fullness. Mm. Chapter one, chapter two, <clears throat> the beginning of chapter three, he just goes back to this fullness over yeah. and over and over again. What's what's Paul trying to say with when he's going back to the theme of fullness? Well, I mean, he starts out with basically it is fullness in Christ and it's the fullness of the Godhead. I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. he is everything. So he was addressing those people that were going, ah, you know what, Jesus is a really good guy. And, and this was the danger to the Greeks in the church was, oh, he's, he's a God. That's okay because we got Zeus, we got Hermes, we mm-hmm. got Apollo, we got Prometheus. And of course we can add Jesus to that. That's really, no, 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 no. He is God and God alone, and he is the fullness. And again, he talks about fullness that comes to our lives yes. through Christ, yes. but it's only Christ who is full in himself that can yes. fill us. Yes. It's just, what, what yeah. a message for today. How he plays with it, because it is, it is, this is the definitive book that Jesus is fully the deity. Yeah. Yep. No question about it. Don't let anyone try to talk you out of it. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's so obvious, it's ridiculous, the heresy still exists. Yeah. Fully God paying the full price for our sin mm-hmm. so he can fully live in us, so we can have a full life. Mm-hmm. And then what's what's really interesting about this passage is he uses all of that to say, live fully with integrity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do everything in full integrity. Yeah, yeah. So he starts with who God is and ends up with how we should behave yeah. in one fullness. Oh, uh, it's, it's uh, incredible. Uh, it's absolutely here. incredible. Okay. And, and, uh, Another question. I'm going to go rapid fire with the questions here. Colossians 2.8. The only place in the New Testament this verb is used, do not let anyone carry you away. Obviously, he's talking about the fullness of the deity, and he's Mm -hmm. talking about the baptism in the circuit. He wants to lead them away from the false teachers, Mm -hmm. and then he uses this really dramatic phrase, let no one carry you away. And what he's talking there, it's, 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 it's actually a very violent verb. It's It's... About when a predator grabs you by the back of the neck yep. Yep. and drags you away. Here's my question to you, two uh, student, students of culture. Come on, Carl. Come on. Come on, I got you. What is it that's grabbing? What is it that's grabbing and carrying away people nowadays? We know the mm. mystical yeah. false teaching. We know the hyper Jewish false teaching. Here, it's not our same deception. No, I think apathy is one of the biggest things carrying us carrying us away. It's it's you know. I, just, I got this disinterest in it. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit in. It doesn't fit in for me. The one that is, and I, I give you credit for this before, is preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and I and I work with I work with young people, <laughs> and I work with with older folks too. But this preference is like this does not fit in to my particular ideas, my particular concepts. Like, there's no absolute. There's no absolute truths for me. It's just like whatever I want it to be, whatever I don't want it to be. That's where mm. that's where I'm gonna go, and what ends up happening. I see this so often in in high school students and college students. What pulls them away from their faith? What pulls them away from this fullness of God is this I is is that self where it's like I don't want what God has. I don't want to take what I call them grocery cart Christians, mm-hmm. right? It's like I'm gonna take what I want and I'm gonna leave on the shelf where that that life givingness is on that shelf oftentimes, and because I don't want to adjust my preferences. I end up with less less of myself. So yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's one. Okay, we don't sure. we we don't uh, we don't compare notes ahead of time on this because <laughs> we like it to just be a live conversation. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I believe. I mm -hmm. I think we start off with this. You know, Andrew, you and I remember this. We were all told to read this book called The Kingdom of the Cults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is the definitive book that yep. outlined why the Jehovah Witnesses were wrong, why the Mormons were wrong, why the Rosicrucians were wrong. Man. So you had all these major either aberrant mm -hmm. Christian uh, teachings or you had these emerging Eastern cults in American culture. And you could identify them, put them in a book, write a chapter yep. about them, and then you could inoculate people against these lies. Now we don't have a kingdom of the cults. We have a kingdom of the preferences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like every single person is its own unique cult yeah. where they have it's picked and weird. chosen their preference. And, and uh, we went from like a national identity, we're Americans, or a subcultural identity, uh, mm -hmm. I'm an Irish American, yeah. Yeah. or a we went from a, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, a, a unionist identity. I work in the steel mills. Yep. Mm -hmm. or, there was these sub identities that were strong as a collective community, to a hyper democratization and a hyper individualization. So, mm -hmm. I don't identify first with any group, not even my mm -hmm. own family. Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm me. Yep. I'm what Google puts in my stream to tell me to shop because That's they've right. seen my preferences. Yeah. I'm what. Chick-fil-A can give me and change my order in 30 seconds to pickles oh. or not pickles. Mm -hmm. And it's created this, it's a very difficult lie to come against because on a weekend and you're preaching, it's hard to inoculate the deception that 2,000 people, people believe. Have, yeah. yeah. But I think it's, I mean, if you read it through, you see that like, no one takes you captive through hollow or deceptive uh, philosophy. So it's like this is very trendy language that they're very attractive language as well yeah and, and the world that we live in today is obviously uh, the world of human rights it's your right self-expression discover self well of course that's very very attractive paul put it uh, early in verse four that you're not deceived by fine sounding arguments so the world of tolerance yes. of, of of human rights of knowing your own rights it's, it's like highly attractive, but it puts through there, and um, that, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces mm -hmm, of this world, mm -hmm. rather than on Christ. Mm. And I think the big thing that really helps us try and cut through the cultural and social voices of society today is Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you preach Christ, you preach something that is profoundly different, that is so confrontational, it's offensive. Right, and yes. it's where Jesus goes, uh, you want me? you got to have a cross. Yeah. Uh, the way I put it one week was that Jesus had all the followers and he, like it's going viral. He is going viral. John chapter 6. Why? Because it was the original Happy Meal. So they all loved the Happy Meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Jesus, yeah. yeah, that's so good. We'll come back to this restaurant every single day. That's mm. so good. He you, get said, free, but you get a free miracle every oh, time yeah, you order time. But he <laughs> said there's, there's dessert and they were like, what? what? Yeah. And most people have not heard about the dessert of the feeding of 5,000. John chapter 6, he said, you want more of this? He says, well, you can eat my blood, and you can eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they're like, does that come with hot fudge? <laughs> it, 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 they're just like so thrown, and they all walk away, and they all start yeah. on like, on follow. I mean, they're all walking away. And then Jesus doesn't make it any easier. He looks at the 12, and he goes, are you going to? Yep. Come on now. Because if you really want to know. And their answer was. We would, but we've sold everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sold everything. Told us to get rid of Our everything. Nets have gone. Yeah. To the <laughs> There's no. You're stuck with everyone this. is in that Motel Six down the road. Yeah. We'll, yeah. That's that we don't have an option. Yeah. yeah. So it's. I mean, it's what Colossians says. We, we, we're, we've died in Christ. We're raised in Christ. We're hidden in Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, we live in Christ. Our life is in Christ. Mm -hmm. It's all the beginning of uh, chapter three. It's just such a, and everything is Christ. And if you p preach Christ, you won't be popular, but you will discover fullness of life. Oh, what I love oh. about the verse you quoted is that hollow arguments. Yeah, exactly. And here's what happens with preference. Wow, this is so cool. I can order clothes that are exactly tailor fit me. I'm a middle class person, but I can get tailor fitted clothes. Yep. I can actually have exactly what channel lineup I want. Yep. I can have exactly what I want on my feet on my phone. And I get everything I want and end up isolated and alone. That's right. Mm -hmm. with, with no community, no friends. I had a guy discipling me when I was a freshman, and uh, he said, I want you to be in such and such small group. And I said, you know, I don't I don't know anyone in that small group. I don't I want to be with my friends over here. 
He said, Kurt, you know what your challenge is? Everyone that you're friends with looks like you. Mm -hmm. He goes, you're not learning anything from those people. Yep. So why don't you go get some people that have different interests than you, different skin color than you, different hair texture from you, yeah. and go find out what they have to teach you. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember having this moment of going, that would be inconvenient and uncomfortable, not as fun, but probably actually wonderful. Yep. Yeah. And th there's a maturity moment of going, my preferences actually leads me down a road that even I will not like yeah. once I get down there. It's a hollow and deceptive argument, as yeah. opposed to, we are all the sinews and ligaments mm -hmm. of this thing, even though we're different, we're held together by Christ, and I, am, I pick up my cross not just to surrender to Christ, but to surrender to you, to help carry your burden. Yeah. And then I become something bigger and better and more awesome, mm -hmm. which... Isn't it, isn't it interesting if you even look, and there's a little bit of generalization, but globally at the church, look at the areas of the, of the world where preferences are so minimal yeah. Yes. The strength of the church. Yes. Where they individually need each other. And yes. it's like, we don't have time to talk about the pickles at, 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 at in and out because we don't have that. Yes. So I am so reliant on Andrew because in our day-to-day -day life, yeah. I'm reliant on Andrew for what he's bringing, what crops he's bringing together, his job to his job towards the village, or, or you know, we're working, working in this mind together. But there's this interdependence yeah. that I think makes the gospel so much richer where yes. folks are just saying, we've minimized, we don't have the preferences. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. so that connection for us is easier. And I think for the church in the West, that's a, such a thing that we have to, to your point, Kurt, we have to fight against yeah. that. Yes. Yes. We have to fight against it. I, I love the part of scripture that talks about, it's our hearts that are deceitful. Yes. So when you go back to the circumcision of the heart, like it's yes. the hollowness, it's not just in what's in other people, but it's with what's within me. And to understand that it is my heart that's deceitful, that is yes. dragging me, like James talked about, away from God, that is a drag me yeah. away from Jesus. Yeah. I, I just think there's so much to our full context that we've got to be av overtly aware of to fight against. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's, it's so good. I'm, but uh, Go ahead. I, I, I'm tempted to bring a couple of pseudo-Christian books that have come popular in the last year that are all about um, do your own thing with God, <laughs> with, a, with some God sauce. Like, yeah, that's right. And I'm just like, first of all, if if you know, you're talking about the, you know, Christianity where there's oppression, Christianity where there's persecution, Christianity where there's mm -hmm. economic challenges, the specialness and closeness and power of the real strength of Christ when it's confronted. And then you put next to it our, hey, Jesus can help you start a Binces. Yeah, that's Jesus right. <laughs> can get you more Instagram followers. It just so it is so hollow and yeah. shallow, and and wrong. You know, the real life is in what you're talking about, Carl, not, yeah, uh, it's so good. not in that self-help stuff. Go, Andrew, you had a thought. No, you're talking about the real life. So, I mean, what I love about Paul is he really takes these Gnostic thinkers on who think that they're so high. And he turns around and he said, you know, they're like the mara, sp spiritual marijuana dealers. They're going to get you high. <laughs> they're going to get you high, man, you know. Where he goes, no, you're, you're this high that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yes, yes, like, yes. Set your minds on <laughs> yes, things above. Yes, you're yes. not going to get it. There's no exclusive club you can get yeah, in man, here. You, yeah. you are high. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? yeah <laughs> whatever club they're offering, it's, it's, it's Club 33 yeah, of yeah, yeah. Pagan Angel Worship. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> I've got another place for you. You're looking down on these guys. Mm -hmm. You're actually looking down on them because you've been, and you didn't yes. think your way up there. You were elevated there. Mm. So, so just set your minds on, 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 and we're on Christ where he's seated, set your hearts on things above, do all of this here. But then, then he just sort of takes all of that, hits them head on and goes, you're way higher than them, but let's get real. Okay, uh, husbands, this is how you treat your wives. Okay, yeah. and he's just like, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. we've gone yeah. like from, I'm yes. seated with Christ yes. in heavenly places, but you're still married, dude. Yeah, yep. this yep. is what I love about Children, Paul. Children, slaves, it's, it's masters, not this is all, what we're gonna have to do here. It's yep. not all theory. <laughs> you can't find more dense theological content than chapters yeah. one and two. Yeah. And by halfway through chapter three, he's telling you what you should do on a Monday. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, it's uh, practical yeah. theology. So, yes. Real. Well, you're still seated with Christ in the heavenly places, yes. but uh, you're, you're a master, an employer. Yep. You're a slave. You're a child. You're a dad. You're a mom. You're a husband. You're a wife. And he, and this is really difficult. Yes. So yeah. stay in that spiritual yes. seat, but play it out in the real world. I just like to say how we share the study <clears throat> and outlines around here. Um, you know, one of us got 
let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. <laughs> and the other one got the passage that said, all right, now, uh, wives, submit to your husbands. Yeah. Fathers, quit frustrating children. And by the way, I've got instructions for slaves, and here's the challenging part. Yeah. Uh, and I, w- I told Andrew off camera, I'm not even sure we should go on the internet record of talking about <laughs> this. Because it is, it is challenging. He spends most of his time when he gets to the practical on slaves and masters. And of course, he's obviously thinking about his friend, Onimus, and he's thinking about Philemon. It's personal. And this is where, and if you were coming around here Bayside and talk to any of the Thrive students, when we go over the sermons, or I'm going into the sermon and I want them to pay attention, the first thing they'll tell me is context, context, context. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because if you do not come to this as a thinking person in context, this, you know, Christ loves and forgives, and by the way, obey yeah. the slave master no matter what. Mm-hmm. In yeah. our modern ears, that just rings. Yeah, yeah, it sparks horrible. something else. Yeah. So talk to me, Andrew. Yep. Talk to me, Carl. What does Paul mean when he tells slaves to obey their masters? Yeah. I think that I've so much of the key to that passage, the NIV separates it. Instructions for Christian households. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. If, you look, if you read verse 17, it says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That, that for me, is whatever you do in life, yes. you do it with the help. This relationship, because it's the big theme of Colossians, in Christ, through Christ, by Christ. Everything is in him. So every relationship you have in life has to be put through the in him filter, mm-hmm. the through him filter, the with him filter. Mm-hmm. So he turns around and he goes, why submit to your husbands? Before we even get the slaves, it's like, what? Yep, yep. Why yeah, submit yes. to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord? But it has to, you can't read one verse without the next. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Those two verses, and they're not separate verses in, mm. in the original. It was a letter. They are the perfect balance in yes. life. And if I love Isabel, I will never ever expect her to submit to me. If I if I ever have to go, you better submit to me. Mm. I have become the last thing that God ever wants me to be. Yeah, I've become 100%. a dictator. And, and I heard a wise person. And, and it is, doesn't work. And it didn't work back then and it doesn't work it doesn't now. Work today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I say to men, don't focus on being the head of your home. Focus on being the heart of your home. Mm. That's, that's what men well, are called preach. to be, the heart of the home. What Paul's saying here, in the cultural nuances of the day, I don't want to start like some weird revolution. We're trying to work out Christianity in its infancy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and wives, do you know what? Just, you know, love on your husbands. Husbands, love on your wives. Model marriage like people have never seen it before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't disrespect your husband in, in, in the public forum because, do you know what? People aren't going to look at Christ then. They're going to think you're part of some like weird cult. Yeah. And husbands, you'd be radical because you're going to love your wife and all your buddies are going to go, you've gone soft. Yep. That is a secret revolution that screams louder than any riot yep. when you start doing okay, this. And it, just to, from, a, from a historic point of view, Loving your wife is a fairly new idea. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes. Wife as property. Correct. Wife as political arrangement. Yeah. Wife as uh, families agreeing on what should happen to the future line of these families. Oh, yeah. You bear the children and I'll have my shrine so, across yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this idea, so first of all, we read it through our eyes and we go, how dare he, da, da, da. Yeah. We needed to go, how shocking it was in the opposite. Yeah. Yes. And then also that what we do, and, and I see good Bible teachers, Bible teachers I respect do this, they read it from what I call the North American <laughs> Wikipedia point of view, yes. yeah. which is we like bullets and definitions. Mm-hmm. They liked communication. This is a letter. Yeah. So get the 50,000 foot level here. Well, here's all he's saying. It's very similar. Christ humbled himself for you. Humble yourselves for each yeah. other. Yeah. He's talking about the doctrine of mutual submission here. Yes. And what is my part in mutual submission? Yeah. Submitting me. Yes. Always. I'm not looking at the wife verse. I'm looking at the husband oh, yes. verse. Yep. But but uh, I mean, before it's I like, move on to the slavery thing, do you got any on this, Carl? Because I, I do no, no, want to no, go you guys, full. Cru- you guys crush well, it. You guys you, crush you, it. you got to so. remember as well, sorry, one last thing on this here, because the whole context, it's the subordination of Christ, the son to the father. Yes. Even yeah. the term yes. son. Yes. That, that is just incredible. Even him turning around going, you know, I know all things, but I don't know that day. I've yielded that to the, to the Father. Father. 
He did not that, think that, that, is, that the heavenly realm was something to grasp yeah, onto Ephesians in Philippians. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Equality was something to be grasped. And then the Holy Spirit, in the same way, the Holy Spirit comes and says what I have said. Yeah. He mm-hmm. reminds you of my words. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't come and say his own words. He yeah. was, he's reminding of the words. Yes. It's all of that is modeled uh, to us now. But but yes, I just have to say. Slaves submit to your yeah. masters in all things. It's it's, yeah. it's it's what you're talking about, Kurt. It's context, context, context. Yeah. Like for a first century, second century reader, they would have understood the a. They would have understood uh, who Paul's talking to, what he's referring to as some of his friends. But then also, like slavery isn't the slavery that we're thinking in America the last you know 400, 400, 400, 200, 200, 300 years. We're talking about a whole class system where there were people who would enter into slavery to yeah. make up a debt, where it was, you know, yes. you'd spend a year, six yes. months into it, like some yes. of it being voluntary. And actually, when you do, to go back to the wives, women were still a lower class than even slaves in the, yeah. in the first and second century. You know what I mean? So it, I, this one, the way I've even preached it too sometimes and attaching it to when Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus is, again, I think he's talking about some ethical stuff here mm-hmm. with totally. whatever you do. Yeah, so the yes. slave, and I think he goes to the lowest denominator, don't hear what I'm not yeah. saying there, goes to the lowest denominator and says, listen, even in that, are you honoring God yes. in the lowliest of yes. position yes. where you would have all the rights in the yeah. world to say, nah, 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 not me, yeah. not me, but I'm still going to obey the master. I've, I've talked about it one, one time, I remember hearing this story about this guy who's a doorman in Chicago. For years and years and years, he's this doorman, and uh, he retires from this, this fancy hotel that he's a doorman at, and the city names the street after him. Mm-hmm. City names the street after him. Wow. And people are like, why is, this, why is this name after him? And they go, he held the door like a Michelangelo painted. Right. Mm. There was this this harmony that he brought to that community, to that little to that little corner of Chicago. What he brought to it, because he was like, I'm gonna do this job with the utmost humility. I'm gonna do this job with the utmost care, with the yeah. utmost love, and honoring others. And I think sometimes we lose we lose sight of that. And the person who wouldn't have lost sight of that is the slave to the relationship that the slave that the slave yeah. had with the master of saying, okay, if I can honor God here, if yeah. I can honor the fullness yes. of Christ yeah. here. Yes. When you go home, yeah. you carry that with you. When you go into the marketplace, you carry it yeah. with, with you. But I think that's, again, the lowest denominator in a societal text. That's why Paul's I, addressing so, that. So, no, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I think it was context, context, context. So what you have here is a guy, Paul, who wrote the letter. Yeah. And you got to remember, there's a guy who walked into the church, not Epaphras who started it, but a guy called Tychicus who's yes. God's Amazon Prime delivery yeah. guy, yeah. right? He's got three letters in the bag. He's yeah. got the general letter yeah. to the church at Ephesus, the um, specific letter to the church at Colossae, yeah. and then he's got the personal letter to Philemon. But he's got someone at his side. Tychicus is standing here reading this to the church, and standing at his side is Onesimus. Yeah, He has a slave at his side. So what Paul's doing in a specific letter here to the church, he's not putting edicts out here for time and eternity. He's just going, right now, with the Romans around in this complex world, this is what I need you to do just yeah. to work this out. But he speaks to slaves practically and he says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So he mm. says to the slave, yeah. you know what? Just you're you're not, I know it's hard, and people have tried to say slavery wasn't like, slavery was horrible, yeah. and it was difficult, and it's how humanity worked, and he needed in, to speak to the slave. In all of its forms. In all, all of its forms. Bond servants, all of its servant evil. class, yep. and the, you know, there is, you're right, there is short of owning humans yep. in the Roman Empire. None of us would wish that for yeah, our for children. Anyone. No, no, none they, of us would no. wish that they for were, our children. They were less than human. They were tools. Yeah. Yes. And there was millions of people. Sometimes it's yes. say nearly twenty percent of the Roman world at that time were slaves. Yes. It was just just crazy. Haley, we need more than two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so stick with us, we people. We so, we're getting to the meat of it right so, now. Paul turns around and this we'll is cut out some stuff I said earlier. <laughs> this is what Paul says, and he, he turns around and says this to the church. Don't forget, there's another letter in the bag. There's yes, another this letter is such a good point. And then what he does is then they leave the church. They've been to Ephesus and they've given the Alps of the New Testament. It's all, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then Colossians, it gets down into some more nitty gritty. 
but when he turns up, Tychicus now with uh, with Onesimus to Philemon, this is what he reads. Therefore, alone in Christ, I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do. Mm. So I'm a Christian leader. Mm. speaking on behalf of my Christian brother. He's not a slave. Mm -hmm. He's my Christian brother. brother. You thought he was worthless, but he is worth so much. I could order you now in Christ to Mm. let him go Mm. because you're a slave owner. You shouldn't have slaves. That's what he was saying. You shouldn't have slaves. I could Mm -hmm. order you to give up slaves. I could could order you to do this. Why? Because we must remember this. We must remember this, that there was society, and that's what Paul was addressing here. This is what he was addressing in Colossians. But there was the church. So think about this. The church is in town. They don't have a building. But they're going to meet in someone else's house. And then you've got slave owner who's a Christian. Mm. And you've got slaves who are Christians. The slaves might live in the barn, which was wrong. And the slave ma- master might live in the own suite. But, but they leave. The slave would walk to church. And the slave owner, he might go on his horse and his cart. Okay? But they go to church, and suddenly, they one leaves here, one leaves there, but when they get to church, it changes. Mm. And the slave is the elder. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. And he invites his boss mm. to take communion. Mm. Mm. Suddenly, there's equal ground. And the church was a revolution. And not just down. equal ground. Upside down. This makes the Roman Empire nervous. It, it turns yeah. it upside so, down. You know, here's one of the big so, assumptions on this passage, is the assumption is that they had the same rights we have. Yeah. Paul's in a Roman prison, understanding the totalitarian regime yeah. of Rome could put down a slave rebellion, wh- whether it be real or yeah, perceived. Yeah. They could kill 10,000 slaves to make a point. Yeah. And that his words from that prison could ignite that. Mm. And he said, what power do I have to change this? I have the personal power of appealing to Philemon. Yeah. And saying, this is wrong. Yeah. I also have the personal power of appealing to Onesimus and saying, rebuke them with your excellence. Yeah. Oh, yes. Go above and beyond. And I think in that cultural context where it was so difficult, with the point you make, Andrew, is a brilliant one. You cannot read Colossians without reading Philemon. Yeah, it's there. An time. old preacher I heard him preach that Philemon, and it, he said, this is the working out, that you have the theology of reconciliation in mm-hmm. Romans and Ephesians. We have the working out of reconciliation. Paul would literally meat ripped off his back from being whipped. Mm-hmm. With all the reasons to be anger and bitter, yeah. locked in a prison, his snen, with his last breath saying, in the most difficult social situation, yeah. slavery, reconcile. Uh-huh. And the only point that can be taken away from this is, who am I not reconciled to? We have to yeah. put ourselves in Philemon's place and go, who God could order me, yeah. but who of my own will? Who is invisible to me? Who do I feel superior to? Mm. Who am I actually putting in a sort of slave category? Yeah. You know, I, I was talking to a young man who was just as angry as angry, and he worked at a local fast food restaurant, and he's, a, uh, he's an ethnic mi- a minority, not yeah. from the area. And I said, I said, what's the problem? He said, I'm so tired of privileged people coming in and not seeing me. Wow. He said, that, and, and they order you around, and they are all, and if there's a pickle missing from their sandwich, it's the biggest catastrophe. Because I just wish they'd see how hard we're working. That's very good. Wow. This yeah. is the message. Yeah, yeah. That's the, not to put ourselves in this cultural critique of Paul, but to put ourselves in the seat of Paul and go, where am I challenging myself to do it as unto the Lord? And who is invisible to me? Yeah. Hmm. Paul, Paul says to Onesimus, sort of says to Philemon, speaking of Onesimus, the runaway slave, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. Mm. Oh. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Mm. And I just think the great tradition of Christianity is not slavery. It is an abhorrence, it is evil in every single form. And I just think of the great William Wilberforce, a young man that could have gone different ways in life and could have been self-serving, but he said, I will live for two things. And that is to see literally the morals and manners of society change, i.e. I want to change my own city, because at that stage, um, um, 25% of single girls under the age of 21 living in London were prostitutes. 
Mm. And he didn't judge him. He said, I want to see that change. That mm-hmm. young women in our city don't see that as a career choice. Mm. And then also, my second thing I want to do is end the evil of slavery mm-hmm. in mm. our world. And he was the great abolitionist. Yeah. And for me, that is the whole trajectory of Christianity. Paul was living in a world, and he said, we've got to grapple with this and do your best in civil order. But this was really his heart. His heart mm. was with Philemon. Mm-hmm. Come on, we're going to deal with this now, even in the Roman Empire, we're going to live as brothers. Yeah. Wow. Um, so powerful. Thank you for joining us here on the flip side. And all I could say is, uh, you know, find someone to work out the good news of reconciliation with today. Who's invisible in your life? Who could you just be a little bit more sensitive to? Maybe yeah. it's someone who is working yeah. a dead end job mm-hmm. seemingly. And, um, and you actually just reach out to them and love them. That I think is the working out of this. Uh, and certainly things like Serve Day that are coming up, City Serve that are coming up, where we actually go, there mm-hmm. still is a problem of trafficking in our world. There still is a problem of poverty in our world. Yeah. And the church is going to be the good news, changing hearts one at a time. Yeah. So join us for that as well. By the way, would you do me a favor, 50th episode? I know we went a little long this week, but share mm-hmm. and follow and subscribe. Yep. It's so important that we not just make the Bible something we do on the weekends but something that enriches all of our lives. So think about someone that you could actually help them by sending this on to them. And um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you the next time on the flip side.